Good afternoon. This is Busy again, and I'd like to uh, show you some results of some uh, equipment I've been working on. Um, as you probably know from my postings on Energetic Forum as well as my uh, my videos, I'm pursuing a uh, building a Watson machine, and one of the big problems faced with making a Watson machine is that when you attach a DC motor directly to an alternator, Lenz's law takes effect and the alternator slows down drastically as well as the motor itself. Um, in researching this, I have developed a switch which I think is definitely putting me in the right direction to solving that problem. And it's that switch, the results of that switch is what I want to show you today. First of all, I want to um, show you wh exactly what the problem is. Um, behind you can see where the alternator is. This is the same alternator I've been using on my other videos. This is a the, our 12 volt DC motor. This meter right here will be recording the voltage coming off of the alternator and this will be showing the amps going into the motor. I also have a uh, attack monitor which I'll use to show you the, the uh, speeds of the motor as well as the alternator as well. First of all I'm going to show you the, uh, the alternator and then I'm going to show you what happens when the alternator is directly attached to the motor itself. So here we go. We're going to wait till the speed gets up and the speed will show that uh, will show the voltage up here climbing. As you can see by the tachometer, there was a significant drop in speed on the alternator. Originally it was around 600 RPMs and dropped down to a little bit under um, 300 after the motor was attached and we're only getting 1000 RPMs on the motor when it's turning. Now what, the next thing I'm going to do is to show you the motor running from the alternator but using the switch that I have developed. So once again we're going to turn this on and we're going to wait till this gets up to speed and then also I will show you the uh, the tachometer readings from the alternator as well as the motor again. So here we go. As you can see by the readings on the tachometer I just showed you, when the motor is engaged using my switch, there's only a 
200 or so reduction in RPMs as opposed to the, uh, the 400 uh, RPM reduction going attaching directly to the alternator. Um, and then the speed of the, uh, the motor itself was, was fairly close to uh, the original one. But as you can see, there was a lot less drag on the alternator using the, the new switch I developed than just hooking it up directly. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you the switch itself. It's kind of buried underneath the alternator right now. But basically, the way it works is that when the alternator is running, um, it stores the power into this capacitor. When the motors go over the switch itself, it triggers the switch, sends it into, it automatically makes contact then between this and these transfer capacitors. As the motor continues to go around, the switch is triggered one more time when it falls, and when it falls, the, these transfer capacitors are automatically connected with the motor. At the same time, then, this, this capacitor is charging again until the cycle comes around and just repeats itself. Um, like I said, I can't show you the, the, the switch itself right now only because of where its location. Um, I hope to have a little bit more detail on the switch and how to make it, um, hopefully within a, a month or so. But I also... Uh, need to tweak a little bit. As you can see, there wasn't very much amperage coming out uh, of the capacitors into the motor. And I do have several ideas how to correct that. Uh, and it's just a matter of fine-tuning my ideas. And uh, afterwards, then, I can hopefully show everybody. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact me on the Energetic Forum. Um, and have a nice day.